Nigeria is focused on harnessing artificial intelligence for a range of benefits from improving productivity to creating jobs, 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 and boosting education. To that end, the Federal Ministry of Communications, Innovation, and Digital Economy is hosting a workshop this month that aims to bring together about 120 leading AI researchers, practitioners, technology companies, civil societies, and other groups. Now, there are specific outcomes hoped for uh, from the workshop. The draft National AI Strategy document defines the strategic imperatives, policies, investments, implementation roadmap, governance structures, and necessary steps to catalyze Nigeria into an AI-driven economy. Now, back in January, we caught up with the minister in uh, Davos, Switzerland, for the World Economic Forum. And one of the questions we asked him was, can Nigeria walk and chew gum at the same time? Can Nigeria pursue artificial intelligence while facing developmental issues like power and other infrastructure, he said, yes, we can. We can, and in development is what we call wicked problems, right? In Africa, we're often faced with challenges where, you know, we have poverty, uh, there's not enough. Ten years ago, ten years ago on the continent, to fix education, we were told we needed to be building more schools and training more teachers. Fast forward to today, because of digital technologies, it's about how can you use technology to help teachers teach better? How can you use technology to help learners learn at home for remediation? Right, that's what we're talking about today. So the world is constantly moving and it's a wicked problem because the requirement for addressing a lot of our problems are constantly shifting. But oftentimes we're fixated on what we've always known about those challenges. Right. And the reality is you're here in Davos, you've seen half of the conversations about artificial intelligence. Absolutely. We're talking about the fact that there's no good workforce in the world. They're gonna need workforce, we have young people. If we don't prioritize artificial intelligence, how are we gonna be able to play in that space? None of us expected generative AI last year. Right. Exactly. Do you use it? Like we do. We yeah. all use yeah. it. Yeah. So, 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 so if we wait and say it's not for us, you know, right. I was talking to someone, this is a very touchy conversation on social investment. Do you know that AI can help us understand how to appropriate our funding for social investment? All right, joining us now from our Abuja studios is uh, the Honorable Minister of uh, Innovation, uh, Communications, Innovation and Digital Economy, Dr. P uh, Dr. Bosun Tijani. Good morning, uh, Honorable Minister. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. So you've got a lot of pots on the fire, uh, a lot you've done in just you know, seven months of being uh, appointed to your post. Are you putting this workshop together because Nigeria is in danger of being left behind in the AI race? Uh, morning, Rotus. Uh, good to be back here and good to be talking to you about AI again. Uh, I don't think it's, uh, it's a question of danger. I think when you look at development, development exists in context. Uh, nations are constantly uh, figuring out how to raise the level of productivity uh, within their economy, how to ensure that there's the growth of GDP. Uh, but sadly, you can't do this in isolation. You have to situate it in global uh, development and, and movement as well. So part of why Nigeria is prioritizing and ensuring that we give leadership to how we look at AI is on one hand to help us reimagine how we can accelerate uh, progress in our critical sectors. You know, what are the opportunities that uh, this technology can offer to us to raise the level of productivity in our critical sectors on one hand. On the other hand is also bearing in mind that we don't exist in isolation. Uh, artificial intelligence, uh, just like the internet, is one of the two top technologies that have significant implications for humanity today. Uh, internet, we've seen what it's done, connecting people uh, to people, connecting people to machines and machines to machines uh, globally, uh, giving, up, uh, giving us opportunity to be able to access knowledge, taking out barriers from, for small businesses to, to be able to participate in commerce. You know, uh, those, those developments, we've seen the benefit. But the benefit for AI is also something that is now coming mainstream and maturing as well. AI offers the humanity the chance to be able to process significant amounts of data sets in manners that we've never been able to do before. And by being able to process this data, it means that we can do the things that we do that are important to us as humanity in a better way. But the challenge with AI as well is when we talk about it, we often talk about the productivity aspect and the good that it has uh, to offer society. But at the same time, we also need to understand that this is a set of technologies that will have significant implications for the things that we already do. I think 
think you've, you've done a lot of features on deep fakes, for instance, where AI can now generate movies, AI can generate content that you can't differentiate uh, between AI-generated content and the ones that are really authentic and generated by people. So the question to government is also, how do you govern uh, this technology in society. You can't just sit there and say it's a development that is for the West and you're not going to think about it, but it affects everything we do. It affects our people, it affects even our elections, it affects our policies, it affects conversation. So as government, we must ensure that we have clarity in terms of one, how we govern AI, two, how we invest in it so that we can actually capture value from it uh, to help raise development in our, our, our economy. And I think Toddley is also so how we ensure that we can put policies in place to support the theming youth population uh, in a country like Nigeria, and I think in the rest of Africa as well, to be able to participate in this cutting edge technology. This is why we're prioritizing it. As governments, as leaders, it will be irresponsible of us to sit there and allow this technology to fully mature and develop without being able to help society uh, make sense out of it. All right, thank you so much for the comprehensive breakdown. I want you've been it's been said that you're one of the most active ministers on social media engaging with people. I want to share a Twitter, <laughs> a Twitter exchange that you had um, when, I think we'll put up the tweet from uh, Naira Metrics, where they announced that this workshop uh, was taking place. An individual, um, okay, so this is your response, but before this, there was a tweet that said, oh, how is it that we are, you are prioritizing AI when we don't have power? And then you use chat GPT um, to respond to that person saying um, why, we ha why we can pursue AI at the same time as pursue our power uh, issues. Why do people, why do you think people only focus on one thing at a time, Minister? No, I think it's understandable. Uh, you know, every Nigerian would like to see uh, improvement in every aspect of our society, which which is absolutely understandable. But in the same spirit, I, I think if you look at the, my response to that question, uh, not only. Uh, uh, do we need to justify that we can actually do AI whilst we're also trying to ensure we improve on, uh, on power situation in the country? The reality is also, historically, Rotos, if we wanted to wait until we fix AI, there wouldn't be a business like Arise. And the fantastic work you're doing to enlighten our citizens will not be accomplished. It will not be there. It will not be a service that you offer. Because I'm sitting in your studio, and everything here is powered by, it's, it's, you know, it's powered by electricity. So we require energy to do so many things. Can the current situation be better? Yes. Is the government doing uh, hard work to get this done or not? Absolutely, yes. But at the same time, you know, that's, we can't say we will not continue to develop a different, different aspect of our society until one particular thing is fixed. If, if that's the case, uh, there won't be connectivity today. There won't be telecommunication sector, which relies heavily on power to be able to power base stations and all the activities that people enjoy. And even that gentleman will not be in a position to be engaging with me or tweeting his thoughts because the mobile phone he uses will not be powered. Internet will not be there for him to leverage. So as we continue to improve on this aspect, we have to ensure Sure that we're not leaving the difficult things that we must also do uh, uh, undone. I think we have to do these things you know, side by side. And artificial intelligence, more than anything, actually offers that opportunity for us to, to start to imagine how we can actually develop on those areas where productivity level is quite low, because it gives us the data set that we can, can use to optimize the way we're allocating our resources uh, in, those, in those areas of our sector. So for me, I think it's this question I get. And, and I have to be honest with you, I think elections is over. This is not, it's not a time that we critique and, and criticize ourselves just because it's easy to say. We, we have to be honest, there's absolutely no good thinking person that will suggest that it is impossible for you to prioritize artificial intelligence, for you to prioritize media, for you to prioritize education until you fix power. I don't, I don't think that's done anywhere in the world. 
I, 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 I agree. Well said. And by the way, the, uh, just for our viewers, the, I believe the Minister of Power, Adilabo, will be having a live address later on this afternoon. We'll be pick, we're picking that up live. Um, on education, Minister, I want to ask you about um, the tech pipeline. I had an interview with the CEO of Terragon, uh, a, a tech company here in Nigeria, and he was talking about his frequent trips to India and how they've got a healthy pipeline there. You're doing 3MT. Maybe you can bring us up to speed on, on that. But the software engineers that are required to build LLMs, these large language models that will power AI, how can we get that pipeline here in Nigeria? This is the foresight. You know, if you look at the presidential priorities, the president made it clear that for everything we want to achieve, we need a healthy workforce to be able to drive it. Uh, the moment I was appointed, less than two months, we launched the largest technology talent accelerator in the world. And what we were thinking of was if technology was truly going to be leveraged to help raise level of productivity across our key economies, you need the workforce. It's the prerequisite. You can't use technology if you don't have the workforce and the know-how. And that's why we invested heavily in that program. We got partners to support that program to ensure that we can accelerate the training of technology talent. We started with just 1% of our 3 million target and the 1% that we started, which are 30,000 folks, they've completed their training actually last week. A lot of them, if you check on Twitter and social media, you see them tweeting their experience. Quite a number of them are now being placed into job. We announced two weeks or three weeks ago as well, the second batch, which is 270,000 young, old, mid-aged Nigerians from all over the country that are also part of this program as well. And you can see the excitement. What we are building under this government, whether it's on talent or digital infrastructure, is the foundation that will drive significant growth of the technology sector. Remember, this is a sector that is already contributing anywhere between 17 to 18 percent to our GDP. Under this government in the next two, three years, you will see that number jump significantly because of the investment that is being made under, under the president, uh, uh, president, President Bola Ahmed's number. Thank you so much for that. Um, now, you already mentioned this, Minister, but just in case any of our viewers didn't catch the morning show, the business segment, I want to play this uh, open AI short film uh, called Airhead. And I want to get your thoughts particularly on how it could affect creators in Nollywood, for instance, since Nollywood is top three with Hollywood and Bollywood. Here is a, a clip of that short film completely AI generated called uh, uh, Airhead. Well, they say everyone has something unique about them, something that sets them apart. It's just in my case, you know, it's quite obvious what that thing is. I am literally filled with hot air. Yeah, living like this has its challenges. Uh, windy days, for one, are particularly troublesome. Or there was the one time my girlfriend insisted I go to the cactus store to get my Uncle Jerry a wedding present. Ugh. What do I love most about my predicament? Ooh, the perspective it gives me. All right, Minister, so, I mean, what, what's your take? I mean, do you see job losses or do you see opportunities from there? Because there's no video cameras, there's no sound person. This is all generated by AI. So, I mean, what, what, do, you, what do you think of what the future holds with something like that? Uh, I think, you know, we have to be grateful for, for journalists like you because you're making my job a lot easier, I have to say. You see, the video you've actually shown there, Rotus, is an indication of the fact that it doesn't matter which part of the world you find yourself. Uh, AI is going to disrupt uh, the way you live. It's going to disrupt your economy. We all know how the entertainment space is quite big for us in Nigeria. Artificial intelligence is going to disrupt that sector. But the thing is, can it be structured in such a way that because we're prepared and ready for it, that we have the right regulations, governance structure in place, perhaps can we even invest in it such that we take advantage of it? Whilst the West that is at the forefront of AI is worried about job losses, I actually believe that for a lot of countries like Nigeria and the rest of Africa, that artificial intelligence is going to help us raise the level of productivity in sectors that we've traditionally not performed well. 
well, which means there will be more jobs being created. I'll give you an example. The president has made it clear that we must cultivate half a million hectares of land. Imagine if we're able to get that done. What's going to happen to our food uh, security challenges in the country and the opportunity for us to actually even help to feed the world? But the reality is that we also know that it is not enough for you to cultivate half a million hectares of land the traditional way. If you're able to bring mechanization into it, if you're able to bring technologies, uh, particularly predictive technologies that can help you do farming in much more smarter way, that your output is going to go to the level where you can become competitive. Imagine the current crisis between Ukraine and Russia and the implication of that for the world when it comes to the supply of grains. This is an area that Nigeria should be taking advantage of. But we're not going to take advantage of it if we approach farming the tra traditional way. We must bring smart technologies into it. We must use predictive analysis, uh, 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 analytical solutions in how we also approach farming. And that's part of what the ministry is looking to do, support every critical development agenda of this nation with the right technology. And artificial intelligence is one of them. So to answer your question again, I do not think AI will lead to job losses for us. I think AI, if we approach it smartly, carefully, and, and with the right investment, will actually help raise the level of productivity across sectors that we've not performed well traditionally. Thank you so much for that, Minister. It's not, I don't know when I'll get a chance to speak to you again, so I have to pick your brain on so many issues. I know you mentioned deepfake <laughs> earlier. <laughs> you mentioned deepfake, but again, for those that may have missed it, I want to show you this video. And Elaine, Nigeria's election is over, but we've got an election in the US, UK, South Africa, all over the world. This um, very sophisticated looking video of Barack Obama that is actually fake, again, generated in AI. Uh, here it is. It's because the video below would be AI generated. I'm also a deep fake. And you should take care when you watch a video on the internet. See you soon. So does that does that does that worry you? The, the, how sophisticated these videos are getting? Again, Otis, again, we, we just have to be grateful for folks like you because uh, for those asking the question, why are you spending time and resources, uh, you know, uh, building AI strategy? This is already a reality. If you go on, on platforms like Facebook, you see a lot of innocent people that are consuming this content uh, somewhat ignorantly without knowing that these are doctored or made up content and they believe what is coming into them. So as a nation, if we don't have a clear approach to how this is going to be managed, it will have significant implications for society. And there's already global movement around it. This is why even the AI strategy we're putting together is being supported and funded by one of our development partners, Luminate, which, which is the foundation of the founder of eBay, because they see that if developing countries don't pay attention uh, to the development in AI and actually have a clear approach to how they will manage it, how they will support it, how they will invest in it, that it may have significant challenges for even the way society is set up. So yes, it does bother me, but at the same time, because we're very proactive about this approach and the president is in support of everything we're doing on it, I think Nigeria will be in a place. After this, our strategy session, we're going to put out uh, the outputs and the outcomes for people to comment in. I think we'll be in a good position uh, to be able to start to ensure that we can protect our people while we also benefit from developments in, in, in artificial intelligence as well. All right, great. I, I want to bring up just a summary of what the expected outcomes are from this um, workshop. And in fact, I've gotten questions. Folks are even asking, where is it taking place? Is it taking place uh, in Abuja? Yes, it's, it's, it's in Abuja, uh, and uh, Rotis, we are actually inviting a number of journalists to be part of this as well, because we also understand that the development in artificial intelligence, we need a media uh, sector and space that has an understanding of the technology so that they can also continue to help us enlighten our people, because many of the issues and challenges and opportunities will start to come to bear to the fore, and we have to keep having conversations about it as society. The 120 people we're inviting is 
a mix of people uh, from different walks of life locally, but also uh, from abroad as well. What we've done is actually leverage our strengths as a nation, which is our, our, our extremely creative population, including our diaspora. So we found some of the best Nigerians in the world participating at the forefront of artificial intelligence. And we're bringing uh, about 60 of them to Abuja. About six or five of the top technology companies in the world, including Meta, Facebook, uh, uh, Google, Microsoft, uh, MasterCard, uh, or, or you know, uh, the, the DeepMinds, which is a, a strong AI company, are also sending their experts to join these workshops. And these are people that are coming from their HQ as well. We are taking this seriously. We believe that Nigeria will lead and find a clear purpose for AI in our, in our economy, but also how we better manage it, but we can also show leadership for the rest of the African continent as well. And Minister, people tend to think of workshops in a very um, limited fashion. They think that, okay, from the 15th to the 18th, you've solved AI and that's it. Can you speak to how this is a continuous effort after this workshop is over? Can you talk about what happens next? Uh it's actually beyond after. So work on the strategies already started. The people we're inviting are now working in groups virtually shaping what they believe we should uh, be taken into consideration uh, on the different thematic aspects of our strategy, which include things like governance, ethics, education, investment in compute power for Nigeria, and, and so many other things as well. So they're already working in thematic groups virtually. When they come to Abuja, they, the workshop we're hosting is not your typical workshop. It's not a conference. Uh, these folks are actually going to be working in breakout sessions to fine tune all the things they've been discussing prior to the workshop. And once they finish, the output is going to be summarized and put into a single document, which we're going to share publicly for those who have not had a chance to participate, to review, and also give their feedback before it becomes a final artificial intelligence strategy for Nigeria that we will then publish. So this is something that is being done in a, a, an extremely open manner, and I think many people will get the opportunity to interact with this document, to contribute to it before it becomes a final uh, strategy document for Nigeria. All right, uh, Minister, I've, I've, I've held you up for, for long enough, but just one final uh, question as we round off. Um, are you optimistic for Nigeria's future in tech? When you, I mean, beyond your appointment and the, and the building blocks you are laying down, how, how do you see the future going for Nigeria? I think our future is bright. If you look at the things that we've set out in just seven months of me coming into office and about going to about 11 months uh, for our dear president, there are certain things that we're doing that people should get excited about. Some of these activities don't uh, become something that you can feel and touch in two months or three months. I'll give an example. Today, uh, the government is in, the president is instructed that we activate but also accelerate the deployment of proper utilization of technology in government. And in Nigeria, we already have the foundation for it, which is our digital ID underneath. We already have a solid payment infrastructure through NIBS. The only thing that we lack to allow us fully leverage technology is what you call data exchange, which is the ability for different departments and parastatus in government to be able to exchange data. And that's something we're now building with the support of the World Bank. We are very optimistic that that is going to be in place in the next six to eight months. And once we have that, we have what you call the Nigerian stack, which is the framework for how technology is used in government. And that framework is what's going to allow the Nigerian government to have a single portal where you can go to access all government services. This is something that is being you know, done thoughtfully. We're, we're meticulously de de designing it. I've also talked before about the fact that the president is instructed that we must invest in digital infrastructure, where we're now putting a fund together, and that fund should be launched very soon to ensure that we can lay fiber optic cable all across the country. And what I would do for us is ensure that regardless of where you find yourself in the country, the quality of our internet is going to be the best that it can be. And the cost will also drop significantly as well. Once we accomplish this and we have a long and deep talent, a pool of talent of people who can actually build technology, you are looking at a country that has the core ingredient and framework to be able to put technology 
into effective use. And this is not a project or in, in, in initiative that we're hoping will be, it will be done by the time uh, you know, the president is done with his first time in office. No, it's something that we, we believe that in the next 24 months, we should start to see it in full, full uh, operations uh, across critical part of our society. Exciting times ahead. Thank you so much for your time, Honorable Minister Dr. Boson Tijani, uh, Minister of Innovation, of Communications, Innovation and Digital Economy. Appreciate it. Thank you so much.